How Republicans just lost Generation Z. This, you know, one of the biggest bright moments of, of my days and, and, you know, my life these days is watching these young people, you know, young people in their teens and 20s who are coming up in the world and are just saying, you know, we're not going to take it anymore. We are sick and tired of being shot at at school. We are sick and tired of the minimum wage being at $7.25 an hour. We are sick and tired of not being able to join a union when we get a job at Amazon or Starbucks. We're sick and tired of, of not having health care. We're sick and tired of, of, of going into debt to the tune of, you know, enough to just lock out life opportunities just to get a damn education. Generation Z is awake. And they, they are having none of this Republican stuff that, that we kind of seem to put up with for most of my life. I mean, there, there, there was a lot of pushback to it prior to the Reagan revolution. But, you know, we've had 40 years now of, of basically Republican policies, even being enforced by a couple of Democratic presidents. I mean, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama both did a lot of good things, but they also continued many Republican policies, many, many of these neoliberal policies. And these young people, the Generation Z, they're, they're, they're not having it. They know what neoliberalism is. They know how, 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 what a failure it's been. They totally get it. I mean, after the shooting in Nashville last month, you, you had all these young people show up. I mean, there were, it was all ages and all races and genders and everything else, you know, showed up at the Capitol building there, but there were a lot of young people in part because two of the three legislators who were being expelled by Republicans were young people themselves. They were, gen they were Zoomers also. Representatives Justin Jones and Justin Pearson. And now, you know, Republicans, now that we've got, a, there's another shooting here now. This is, uh, what, in Louisville in a bank. Last week, Ted Cruz had made uh, an offhand comment, apparently, about how, well, yeah, if we had more guns than people had, people were in banks with guns, things would be safer. Right, so, the, so a guy buys a gun, walks into a bank in Louisville, kills five people. One of the, the police officer was shot in the head is still in critical condition. Brilliant, Ted. Representative Jones of Tennessee, Justin Jones, said uh, your overreaction to his Republican colleagues, your overreaction, your flexing of false power has awakened a generation of people who will let you know that your time is up. And you can just see these, these uh, old white Republicans in the Tennessee legislature sitting around going, yeah, right. Um, they don't realize their time is up. There is a new generation coming up, and they are wide awake. They know what's going on. These young people are not buying the BS that's coming out of Fox so-called news, right-wing hate radio, and, and uh, you know, the, the, all this stuff. In fact, it, just consider some of these statistics. These are 18 to 29-year-olds, right, which is Zoomers. 63% of them think, think the gun laws should be stricter. 70% of 18 to 29 year olds voted for John Fetterman in Pennsylvania when they went back and looked at that, at that election. In fact, across the nation in the 2022 election of the Gen Z voters who actually showed up to vote, and they're, they're starting to show up to vote in substantial numbers, 77% of them nationwide voted for Democrats for Congress. I don't think we've ever seen numbers like that. On, on a generational basis. I, I may be wrong, I, I don't have the statistics for every generation, for every, you know, past, what, 50, 60, 70 years, but, but I don't, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I don't recall anybody, uh, you know, ever seen a number like that, 77%, 87% of the students in Wisconsin who voted in the, in the race for Supreme Court justice 87% of them voted for the, the candidate most closely aligned with the Democratic Party, Janet uh, Pres, Pres, Presterwitz, how, however you say her last name, uh, Judge Janet. 
And now that, you know, the leading cause of death for children in America is bullets. I don't think Gen Z is going to vote for a Republican for a long, long time. <clears throat> I, I remember the, the early 1970s after Richard Nixon went down in flames and everybody saw how incredibly corrupt the Republican Party was and said, you know, I, I mean, you know, there, there were, Kevin Phillips, I believe, wrote a book about it. You know, this is the end of the Republican Party. I mean, there were people th thinking the Republican Party was just never going to hold power again. And then Jude Wininsky came along in 1977 with his two Santa Claus theory. And that just like, you know, the, the sun opened up. Oh, yeah. When, when Republicans get the White House and, you know, Reagan was the next one to do that. Spend money like a drunken sailor. And then as soon as a Democrat comes in, starts oh, and give huge tax cuts to the very, very rich. And then as soon as the Democrat comes in, starts screaming about the deficit caused by your tax cuts for rich people. They've been doing it ever since. They're still doing it. And now, to, to really, you know, put the, put the screws to Generation Z, to Zoomers, you've got Republicans saying, hey, let's raise their Social Security retirement age, but don't worry for you older people right now who vote Republican. We're not going to do it to you. We're going to do it to these young people who vote overwhelmingly Democratic. That's going to endear them to the GOP, right? Remember in 2005, after George Bush got, uh, George W. Bush got reelected, and he, he gave that speech where he, he talked about how, I earned a bunch of political capital in this election, and I intend to spend it to privatize Social Security. And he went on a 20, it was going to be an over 20 city tour to promote the idea of converting Social Security into individual private retirement accounts administered by Wall Street banks. And after five, six cities, every, every time he spoke someplace, the idea of privatizing Social Security became less popular and finally he gave up. He said, okay, that's it, screw that. And he started painting or something. I don't know what he did, but, but uh, you know, we just went back to torturing people in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. But this is what they want to do. They, I, this is what Reagan did. See, I, I mean, somehow these guys think that Reagan's playbook will still work. In 1983, Ronald Reagan wanted to begin the privatization of Social Security. And so he did a couple of things. Number one, he made Social Security income taxable. Used to be he didn't pay income taxes on Social Security income. Now you do. You could thank Ronald Reagan for that. Um, number two, he, he significantly increased the amount of tax that you pay into the Social Security Trust Fund, but not for rich people. They put a cap on this, on the, uh, the amount of money. Now, they didn't, the cap goes all the way back to the origin of Social Security in 1935, but, but they capped it out in 1983 at, uh, my recollection is it was around $40,000 back then. And, you know, it's risen up to, it's around $150,000 right now. But if you make more than $150,000 a year, and there's a lot of people in America who do, you don't pay a single penny on the additional income in taxes to support Social Security. Reagan could have fixed that. In fact, if he had done away with the cap, Social Security would be solvent forever. But Reagan wasn't interested in making Social Security solvent forever. He was interested in starting the process of privatizing it. That's why they rolled out 401ks back then. It was like, hey, you know, let's get people used to this and we'll subsidize it with a tax break. Is Gen Z going to go along with raising the retirement age like Reagan did? Because in 83, Reagan raised the retirement age to, to 67, but he didn't have it kick in until last year or the year before. I mean, he, he put like 40 years of space between himself and that increase in the retirement age because he knew the consequences would not make him popular. And today when they talk about, well, the retirement age of Social Security just went up to 67, nobody says because Ronald Reagan did it. So that's what Republicans now are trying to do. They want to take it up to 70. You know, while in France, people are in the streets because Macron raised it from 62 to 64. Here, the Republicans want to raise it from 67 to 70. And, but it, it'll only kick in for those people who are in their 20s right now, don't you know? Right. Do you think Gen Z is ever going to vote Republican? They'd have to be nuts. 
I, I'm telling you, this the, we are looking at the fourth turning here. We are looking at the end of a generational cycle, a 40-year generational cycle within these 80-year larger cycles. And you know what's old is going to be new again. It's a, the progressive politics are on a on a roll. This is the Tom Hartman program. I am very optimistic about the future of this country. If we can just make it through the, the bloodlust of the NRA and the GOP.